Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to look at the fact that Spider-Man Homecoming has finally come home to Disney Plus and has officially hit the Disney Plus timeline. Well, officially hit it again, because technically speaking, Homecoming in limited regions has appeared on Disney Plus for a while now. You can see from this article from Direct.com, uh, posted uh, June 17th of 2022, you know, almost a year ago. So limited regions have had the advantage of having Di um, Disney Plus include Homecoming and even Far From Home for a while now. But finally, globally, it is now on Disney Plus, thanks to the new agreement between Sony and uh, Marvel, which is great. So let's see where they placed it on the timeline. No big surprise, it's in the same location that they put it in the limited regions that it did appear in, which is it's part of the trio of movies that address the fallout from Civil War. Black Widow, Black Panther, and Homecoming. All three address, you know, how our heroes were affected uh, and the fallout from, from that awesome movie, Civil War. And of course, uh, Homecoming appears right before Doctor Strange. So let's talk about why it's placed here in the timeline. Well, First of all, it picks up right after Civil War. I mean, literally, uh, Tony and Peter and, and poor Happy carrying the luggage back there have all come home from uh, the battle, and they're back in America, and we're literally like just a few days after Civil War. And of course, we have the epic, awkward hug. I'm, I'm not hugging, I'm opening the door. We're not there yet. <laughs> Love that relationship between Tony and Peter. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. But this is interesting. So why specifically was the order... Black Widow, Black Panther, and then Homecoming, since all three basically happen right after Civil War. Well, you could argue the order should be Black Widow, because that picks up like the day after, where she's on the run from Ross. Then we have Homecoming, which picks up a couple days after, you know, the flight home. And then Black Panther, because this newscast he's watching of his father's death, they even say is a week ago. So technically, the beginning of Black Panther falls after the beginning of Homecoming and after Black Widow. But the real reason why uh, uh, Homecoming is placed where it is, is it does jump forward two months very quickly. I mean, there's it's only a short period of the movie is uh, in June, right after Civil War. The rest of it is two months later. And they even show that in the movie really clearly, that it happens in September. You can see the date there of the decathlon, September 14th. And remember those days when they actually put dates in the movies. <laughs> Come on, Marvel, please do that again. I mean, as phases one through three, many of the movies had exact dates and even years to tell you when things were happening. So hopefully that'll start happening again. In fact, uh, Quantumania, which is going to hit the Disney Plus timeline next week, does appear to have a very specific date in it. So we'll talk more about that when that comes out. But yeah, go gone are the days where almost every single movie had specific dates. Okay, so... That explains then why uh, Spider-Man Homecoming is placed after Black Widow and Black Panther, because Disney Plus is basing it, or placing it rather, based on the majority of the movie. Most of the movie is September timeframe, and that's why it's there. So let's talk about Doctor Strange, though. It is worth mentioning, because Doctor Strange's placement has, has confused people over time, and now that Homecoming is firmly in there, let's talk about Doctor Strange and why it is located where it is. Well, here we go again with an exact date. I mean... <laughs> The, the day, February 2nd, literally, of 2016, is seen on Stephen's watch, Stephen Strange's watch at the beginning of the movie. And of course, this is a pivotal scene because uh, that watch is very important uh, throughout um, several of the movies. So we get this date. It is firmly February 2nd of 2016. That's actually prior to Civil War because Civil War is May through June of 2016. So the beginning of the movie, at least, is very early on. However, the end of the movie... And the biggest battles of the movie are in, in winter time frame. Because obviously you remember this scene with the Ancient One, really touching scene as she finally realized this was the moment of her death. It was snowing in New York. So that places it, you know, any time around October, November, all the way into January of the next year. But the key is the beginning of the movie is before Civil War, but the end of the movie is after Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay, so do we get any idea of exactly where, though, it ends? I mean, not necessarily, but we do get this real nice hint in Endgame. Remember, during the time heist, Hulk goes back and talks to the Ancient One, and we're talking now May of 2012, and he's looking for Doctor Strange, and she says, you're about five years too early. So advance five years from May of uh, 2012, and you get what I believe to be early 2017. So in my opinion, and also on the... Uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe Wiki, it places it in January 2017. 
So what's the bottom line here? Doctor Strange is another tough one to place. It starts before Civil War and clearly ends after Homecoming. So it appears that once again, the timeline on Disney Plus has positioned a movie based where the majority of the movie and some of the major battles occurs. So that placement does make sense, but it's just interesting. Now, this idea, though, that a movie is placed where the majority of it occurs, it does still trigger people then when they see Thor The Dark World. Because Thor The Dark World, while it picks up right after Avengers, remember that opening scene with Loki being taken to Asgard is right after Avengers, and then it jumps all the way to November of 2013. Well, it's still placed before Iron Man 3, which is in December of 2012. So it sandwiches Iron Man 3, but I think most people would agree that flipping this order would be better. I guess there's the remote chance that they feel that Iron Man 3 is actually in 2013, December of 2013. Oh, please, no. We'll find out with the timeline book, I guess. But anyway, it is interesting that they switched the strategy for Thor The Dark World uh, on the timeline placements. All right, well, one of the things I think is so cool about all of the Spider-Man movies, and, and Homecoming fits right into this, is they lay out his timeline for his high school years to perfection, okay? So his freshman year is highlighted in Civil War. And Civil War, as we talked about, that's June of 2016. So it's the end of his freshman year when he's pulled away to go to the battle in Germany uh, and then re is returned back because he even talks about he's got homework, right? So he's still in school during Civil War. All right, but it's the tail end of his freshman year. Then his sophomore year is highlighted in Homecoming, the movie we've been talking about that just appeared on Disney+. Plus. And again, after Civil War, remember, it jumps to September of 2016, and it's the beginning of his sophomore year. So we see that in Homecoming. Then his junior year is featured in Infinity War. Because remember, in Infinity War, he was riding on the bus, so he, so he was still in school, but it was nearly over. So we're talking May of 2018. So it was the tail end of his junior year. Now, why is that so important that it's the tail end? Well, because after he's blipped, as you can see in the lower right, and comes back, we see in Far From Home, they have to repeat junior year. Ouch. So even though they were one month, basically, a month and a half from being done with their junior year, they had to repeat their entire junior year. Ouch. That would really, really be annoying. But anyway, so his second junior year is featured uh, at, in Far From Home. And of course, it's ending, right? He's going on um, summer break in it. So that's his second junior year. And then his senior year is featured in No Way Home. Because remember, in No Way Home, they're trying to get college applications, etc. Dr. Strange ends up casting that spell where everybody forgets who he is. And because they forget who he is, notice he's got to take a GED test. So you could actually argue his senior year and then his complete, complete redo of entire high school because <laughs> he has to take that test. Of course, he'll ace it in moments. But anyway, isn't that cool just to see how well laid out his entire uh, high school uh, career is, if you will, his entire time in high school. Kudos to Marvel for that. I haven't seen the timeline work this perfectly anywhere else where they're just, it's flawless. It's flawless. Love it, Marvel. Love it. That said, one of the things I was very anxious to see as soon as Homecoming dropped, I literally woke up about four in the morning because I was kind of excited about this thing dropping. I wanted to see, did they fix the worst ever timeline error in the history of mankind? No, they did not. No, they did not. Oh, I was really, I, I, mean, I kind of suspected they didn't. I was putting it at about a 10% chance they would fix it. But still, guys, come on, put the number four. Now, I, I think everybody knows exactly why this is an error. And you can watch some of my other videos for a detailed explanation. But the bottom line is Homecoming is only four years after Avengers. Four years, not eight years. Now, one of the reasons, though, people have said that this might be trickier to fix than it seems. I mean, obviously, Sony owns the movie. You know, Sony has the right to distribute it, if you will. So they probably have the right to override fixing this. There is that concern, but Sony and Marvel are working together. The other concern is, it's not just that eight years later graphic. Notice later in the movie, Vulture says eight years and not a word from the feds. So they would have to dub that with four years. I don't think that's rocket science. They could probably find somewhere where Michael Keaton said the word four in the movie. Uh, even if it's F-O-R, not F-O-U-R, and they could probably do it and you wouldn't even notice it. But nonetheless, I agree. It could be a little trickier than just fixing, you know, that graphic. Oh, well, we can hope, right? Please, Marvel, please fix it. Pretty please. Oh, well. 
In the meantime, one down, two to go. They've been telling us by the end of this year for sure, uh, Far From Home will be global on Disney+, Plus, but also No Way Home. That's under a brand new deal where it comes to Disney+, Plus much faster. In fact, all future movies will come much faster to Disney+. Plus. So, very exciting. Uh, we'll have to, I really want to see where they stick No Way Home in the timeline. Far From Home, because it's shown up in limited re- regions, we have seen that one already. But No Way Home will be interesting. All right, there you go. Very cool. Go check out Homecoming if you haven't seen it yet. Well worth a watch, uh, a rewatch. Such a great movie. Such a great movie. And then as I always mention, we do have a Discord server. Notice this is the timeline conversation where we're talking about everything under the sun, timeline related. Uh, I will put a pinned comment uh, with this video that you can join the server. And also I'll have a link to my timeline documents on my Google Drive. And if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content and we can all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.